Welcome back to Bully Ball presented by DraftKings. I am Rachel Nichols. I'm going to go a little out of order today because Isaiah Thomas is with us. Very happy to have you back, sir. But we got to give our props to the one, the only <laughs> beer leopard champion and legend, <laughs> Boogie Cousins. His team swept yeah. in the finals, swept 4 0 yeah. victory, finals MVP, MVP, MVP. <laughs> MVP. Boogie, how does it feel? It feels good, man. It feels good to win. It's hard to win anywhere. Um, the job was done the correct way, so uh, I'm satisfied. I'm happy. You know, I scratched that little urge to play basketball, winning basketball, team ball, mm -hmm. had that camaraderie with a group. So uh, I'm feeling good. My confidence is high. Um, so, you know, I'm happy. I'm good. Congrats, right. I want to know what the, appreciate, you, appreciate you. Yeah, That's seriously. I want to know what the first thing you want to do when you get home and the first thing you want to eat when you get home. Oh man. First thing I'm doing for sure is getting a haircut. Like I'm out here looking crazy. Um, but you know, that's part of the grind. I'm okay with that. I embrace that part. But um, you know, once I get back, that hair appointment already booked. And then um, get cleaned up, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> And then uh, what am I going to eat? Um, I think I'm going to get some junk food. I might like do some Shake Shack with a milkshake or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I just like, I want it. something simple. Bro. Yeah, right? something simple and greasy, yeah. bro. Yeah, I deserve you it. You got to. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm definitely going to give me a nice burger for sure. <laughs> It's like when they took the uh, Michael Finley took the beer away from Luca the other I night. I was that, just man. like, dude, he doesn't play for six days. Let the man have his beer. Yeah. You should have all the Shake Shack you want. That's all I have to say. Hey, my job is done. Yeah. I, 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 I like I like Finley's approach, man. You know, the job isn't done. He wants his guys locked in. So I'm not mad at it. That's a good OG when you can see it from his perspective. He wants the best for the young fella, but. You know, when the job is done, you can get you a beer, bro. It's going to hit the same, I promise. You can get you a little more than that. Hey, I was yeah, going to say. Little, more than that yeah, when little, the job is done. Hey, let Huka Donk get you out, man. Do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's talk about the job that they still have to do. Uh, Celtics, six and a half point favorites over the Mavs to open the series game one in Boston on Thursday. Uh Look, the stats are kind of crazy when you compare them. I will say the Celtics, they've only played three games as underdogs all year, so they're not doing it in this series. The Mavs have played 42 games as underdogs this year, so they are used to being in this position. IT, what's your sort of overall thought on the series? Um, I think I think it will go five to six games. I got Boston winning it. I think they just got a little bit little bit more than Dallas has and they also got the the the, the defenders to to somewhat slow Kyrie and Luka down like even even if Kyrie and Luka have amazing games amazing series I just don't think they have enough for uh the Boston Celtics like they got they, they got the experience they've been there multiple times um they know what it takes to win and then like especially if Porzingis is healthy. I think they just got a little bit more than Dallas has. Mm -hmm. And they haven't wasted as much energy as Dallas has. Like mm -hmm. Dallas has wasted a lot of energy this playoffs, you know, just trying to advance each round. Yeah. And Boston's kind of been been chilling for the most part. Like they've had a couple tough games. But other than that, like they've been getting their rest. They've been chilling and, you know, preparing for these moments. So I, I definitely – I got Boston winning it. Hopefully it's a good series. Hopefully, you know, Dallas proves me wrong. I agree. I agree with everything he said. Um, like I said in previous episodes, Boston <laughs> has been <laughs> – they've been the title favorite all year long, like especially coming out of the East. Um, I won't – I guess you can't say we thought they were title favorites. I believe for the most part everybody thought Denver would kind of be back in the same position. But, um, you know, as far as coming out of the East – as far as how their year started off, how they played throughout the entire year, they've been dominant. And they're, they've been dominant throughout the playoffs. Um, they're, the way this team was built was built perfectly. Um, Dallas doesn't have a Drew Holiday. Dallas doesn't have a Derek White. And Dallas, damn for sure, doesn't have a Przingis. So um, 
just those three guys alone are going to be a tough matchup for Dallas to, you know, even come equal to. Um, obviously, we know what Kyrie and, and Luka do, but, you know, hypothetically speaking, we can say they both average 40 this series. Yeah. Where are they getting the rest of that scoring punch from? And on top of that, yeah. when you look at Boston's two main guys and Jalen Brown and, and, and Jason Tatum, they just don't have – the defensive intangibles to match up with that either. So um, mm-hmm. I feel like everything is just leaning towards Boston. Um, they had an incredible offseason. They did they did it correctly. Um, I think they really, really dug deep into putting the perfect pieces around their, their two main guys, you know, guys that are, you know, ultra talented, can play both sides of the ball, have been at the ultimate stage. Um you know, Derek White coming from a great organization like the Spurs, he knows how to play winning basketball. Drew Holiday being proven. I just think the Celtics did their – they did A-plus homework this offseason and they put together a real title team. So, uh, I think Dallas had an incredible run, but I think it ends here. Um, and, mm. I'm, and I'm going to be generous and I'm going to say I think Dallas will get two games just because okay. Kyrie and Luka are that special. Um, yep. But just that team alone with the Celtics is just not going to be enough. I think Celtics come out victorious in there, you know, this year's champions. Well, look, Brad Stevens won executive of the year this year. And that was for all the additions that you just talked about. I mean, it was masterful what he did. And Nico Harrison also obviously on the other yes. side to do what he did at the trade deadline to make all those pieces work give up the assets he gave up that a lot of us were like, how are you going to go forward if this doesn't work? You know, he kind of locked himself into this opportunity and it all paid off. And Jason Kidd gets a lot of credit, I think, and obviously all the players for buying in. But it is hard to, it's interesting to me that you do have a big chunk of people picking the Mavericks when it feels like the matchups are so clearly in the Celtics favor. And I think a lot of that is just the feeling of, you know, Hey, this team has let us, the Celtics team has let us down in the past and you know, that their value isn't really obvious to us until they win a title, you know, any of that stuff. If you took away their history and just looked at the two teams on paper, I think everyone would pick the Celtics. Right. Um, and in a way, that history is actually an advantage for them. There were some interesting quotes coming out of Boston practice over the last couple of days. Uh, Jason Tatum said, obviously, we've been there before. We came up short. It's a great opportunity to make it to the finals again. He said, you don't always get a second chance. So really just looking at it as a second chance and trying to simplify things as much as we can. And then Al Horford frankly, went a little further. He said, I think what happened a couple years ago is going to help tremendously because the first time it felt like a roller coaster, he said. The increased media coverage, all the responsibilities, everything that came with it. He said, I think this time around, we all have an understanding. We know what things are like. I feel like we'll be able to manage everything better. So to me, that is a real indication that they are going to be a different team than they were a couple years ago when they played Golden State. And they bring up good points. I mean, it is always hectic and crazy. I tell guys before they play a Super Bowl, before they play an NBA Finals, just get ready because your preparation for the game is going to get thrown off by the fact that the anthem is longer, that the introductions take longer, that they you know add more commercial time before you mm-hmm. get started. The time before tip is different in an NBA Finals. And even just that can really throw guys off. Uh, I don't know. How big of an advantage do you think the experiences, Boog, uh, that the Celtics had just a couple of years ago versus the Mavericks, who I think uh, Kyrie and maybe Keefe, are the only two guys who've been in finals before? Well, um, I think it, it helps tremendously. Um, I think that's a huge factor in this series as well. Uh, this is a team that has been here before. Um, they have, and not only just being in the finals, they've had so much playoff experience. Just they, Their two young guys came into the league experience in the playoffs right away. So this isn't like a shocker to them. This isn't, you know, really – something that's going to disrupt them emotionally. They've been here before. They're like, they're, they're seasoned when it comes to this stage. And like I said, those key additions that they added, you can say the same about those guys as well. 
So um, this is a group that's that's proven that they can handle this stage. This is a group that's, you know, got the miles, got the experience. You know, they've lost, they've won, things of that nature. So they're built for this moment now. And when you talk about the Mavericks, well, obviously, yeah, we could say Kyrie, we could talk about Keith, but even Luca. Um, when it comes to the Euro basketball, like that's that's not an easy task. Let's like let's not, you know, try to water down what they have going on over there. Um, that's some of the most hostile environments to play in. And um, you know, he did that at a young age and was and came out victorious with that as well. So that type of experience can definitely carry over. And I, you can also say that's why he came into the league so seasoned and so ready. Uh, he's experienced those top ne- top notch type of environments. So uh, coming to the NBA was almost an easier transition for him. So um, you got three guys that have been there, but, um, you know, three guys can't win you a series. And it's a lot of youth. It's a lot of inexperience on that Maverick side when it comes to playing at this level of basketball. So uh, I think that also plays a factor in this series. Yeah, I I mean, I I agree with you, Boog. Like, the experience is everything. Like, those guys – the things that they're saying in the media as well is like they'll be more calm this time around. Like it's going to be a lot for young guys like Lively, um, that the younger guys that, that's never been there before on the Mavs to get this type of coverage. Like the whole world's watching. Like mm-hmm. you miss a layup, like they talking about you. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's just a little bit different. Like I always say the brighter the lights get, like it's not for everybody. Like, this, this stage isn't for everybody. So the Celtics got the edge on experience. They got the edge on, I think, players being in these situations. Like, Drew Holiday is a key, a key, a key player in this. Like, yes. he, I think he calms mm-hmm. the Celtics down. Like, he's been there before. He's won one. Like, that's going to be the difference between winning and losing. But we can't put past Jason Kidd, though, as well. Like, he's an amazing coach. Yeah. He puts them in situations where – He's been before. Like, he's won a title as a player. He's been, and you know, he's a Hall of Fame player. I think that's that calms Dallas down a, um, a lot as well. So we can't look past that. I just think Boston got a few more players that have been in these situations that it's not going to be a surprise to them. So, like, the finals are big, and I think everybody's not built for that. And mm-hmm. the, Celtic have, the Celtics have more players that are built for this stage than the Mavericks do. So we'll see. Hey, listeners, we might be in the middle of the NBA Finals, but don't worry. There's still plenty of time to get in on all the NBA action with my partners at DraftKings Sportsbook. You absolutely have to check this out, especially if you're new to DraftKings. You can use my code, BULLYBALL, and new customers can bet just $5, and they get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code BULLYBALL only on DraftKings. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. DraftKings is the one-stop shop for all things daily fantasy, where you can join in on all the fun and have a shot to win cash prizes. From tip-off to the final seconds, DraftKings has you covered with same-game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. So go ahead, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my code, BullyBall, and you will bet just $5, and you can get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code BullyBall, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Have you ever wondered if Chet Holmgren might be a descendant of Abraham Lincoln? Or if a UFC fighter could beat an alien in a fight? Well, maybe you haven't, and that's okay. But Shea Serrano and Jason Concepcion from Six Trophies? Well, they certainly have. If you're like me and you like to listen to as many good basketball podcasts as you can – 
After you're done listening to Bully Ball, you got to listen to Six Trophies. Every week, Shay and Jason serve up the biggest moments from around the NBA with their patented mix of joy, banter, pop culture side quests. They also hand out six pop culture themed trophies for six basketball related activities. Stuff like the Denzel Washington in Training Day trophy that's given out to a player or team having the best week around the NBA, or the Lauren Hill. You might win some, but you just lost one trophy for the team or player that just can't get it together. Plus, a bunch more trophies for all the good, bad, or just plain head-scratching moments around the NBA. So follow Bully Ball, but also follow Six Trophies on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Or you can listen ad-free by joining Wondery+. Plus. Yeah. I mean, to me, the Mavericks have to play not only their best basketball, but up a level from what we've seen so far, yes. which is a tall ask because we've seen so much good stuff so far. And, and look, I mean, it's funny, Isaiah, you said, you know, hopefully Dallas proves me wrong. I think emotionally, a lot of people around the country uh, are rooting for the Mavericks. I think that Boston sports teams always have a hard time getting fans outside of Boston, right? The Patriots didn't have as many fans outside of New England. Um, you know, that Boston teams are, are rarely America's teams, so to speak. Right, and sure. Luca and Kyrie are just so engaging and, you know, bring you in with them that I think there is a real sort of, you know, emotional surge among basketball fans. We want the Mavericks to win and they absolutely could win. I mean, it's not like, it's not like they can't, this isn't sort of where nobody can see it happening. Um, but again, if you, do without your heart and you just do the hard numbers and sort of where things are. And even the stuff in the clutch, I mean, what we saw in that final series against Golden State was a lot of what we've just been talking about, that inexperience, the lights being so bright, you know, they really fell apart at the end of really important games, that kind of thing. This year, they are in the playoffs, the number one team in the clutch, number one. Now, Dallas is number three, so they're both good teams in the clutch, but the fact that Boston doesn't have that as a weakness anymore, at least so far, I think makes a big difference too. I want to break down the specifics of the sort of points of strengths of what, what, may, what might make a difference in this game. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple categories, depth, defense, three-point shooting, and the clutch. Um, tell me about depth. Who do you think has the edge in depth, Boogie? Um, I'm going to roll with Boston as far as depth. Mm -hmm. um i i got that even i got I, I think they both they're they're somewhat even when it comes to depth like, yeah they don't really go deep into their bench either both teams so i got i got that one even yeah. all right defense what do you think it oh uh, you got to go with boston that i think that's the biggest thing though like their defense can somewhat slow those the, the two-headed yeah. monsters down like they got enough defenders to somewhat slow those guys down. So I'll go with Boston on that. Boston by a landslide. <laughs> I mean, just the individual defenders they have. I mean, I just think. Just the individual, I, yeah. Yeah. Drew Holiday and Derek White, it's, it's nothing to talk about. Man. <laughs> like, like they got they got a big ass too, but, but – the, I, they got the chance to slow those two down with, yeah. with how good they are. I'm confident with a Drew Holiday on my team against any guard. Yeah, I'm not saying he's going to stop him, but I know he's going to get him the best defensive job they've like ever experienced, especially at this time of year. I, I'm confident with a Drew Holiday. Me too. Well, look, we saw in the series against Oklahoma City, there are things you can do to sort of limit – Kyrie's offense. Now, Kyrie w did a great job of settling in and focusing on the other parts of his game and and was an important part of that series win, but he didn't score a lot. And there are ways to do that, and they have the blueprint already. I expect to see a lot of Jalen Brown on Kyrie, which leaves everyone else available to throw at Luka, which I think is going to make a big difference too. But, you know, Mavs have been playing great defense themselves, so they've got a chance to limit Boston stars. It's just the individual defenders are so elite on Boston. They've got two All-NBA defenders and a third in Jalen Brown, who easily could have been All-NBA. He was the first one left off the list. If you look at the points of votes and things like that, um, you know, it's I, I'm with you guys. I think it's it is what it is. And Rachel, I got I got one more thing with that. It's yeah. like 
like Dallas got defenders, but their offense is not good. Like the their the the Dallas defenders, their mm-hmm. offense doesn't bring enough. Right. Boston's defenders, they still really good on offense. Yeah. Like they, yeah. they they still can get you twenty to twenty five on on any given night. So I think that's why they got the edge when it comes to that. Like they can slow you down and they can also they can also they've been real good options on the offensive end as yes. well. And and playmakers. Not only just yeah, seriously. And playmakers. scoring, and but playmakers. playmakers as well. Like they can make For sure. the two number two I mean the first and they can make the one and two options jobs that much easier when it comes to helping them score and also giving For them sure. opportunities to score just with their ability yeah. to play make. So you're right. Well, yeah. this gets into the next category, three point shooting. What what do you think, Bug? Boston. I'm rolling with Boston. Um, all five. I mean, I think Dallas has some really good shooting, but Lively is a – you know, he's a lob threat. When it, when it comes to Boston, mm-hmm. KP at the center position, if he if they decide to go that right or e- that route or even have an Al Horford as your five, mm-hmm. he's still bringing shooting to that lineup. So, um, Dallas has a tough defensive assignment, very tough. Lively mm-hmm. has a tough defensive assignment. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's going to be tough for Dallas. Yeah, I'm going to go with Boston. They shoot more. Their program to shoot threes all year long, they've been, no matter no matter if they're not making them at all, they're, they're yeah. shooting a lot of them. So, like, they, they, they get the attempts up. I think they got more players that shoot more. Like, they definitely got the edge on the three-point shooting. So, I'll yeah. go with Boston as well. Well, look, the way – Jason Kidd has had his guys defensively scheme has been very different than what they will have to do against Boston because he's had them pack in the paint, right? And that let three point shooters shoot and we're going to have the advantage. You can't do that against Boston, as you point out, IT, right? Like most, most uh, attempted threes, but the more important stat, most made threes in the NBA for this season. Um, And obviously those guys are such a danger. Now, Luca's a danger when he, you know, gets toward the hoop and then kicks it out. That's one of his favorite moves. And certainly, you know, he's got, I mean, just an an uncanny passing ability. Um, But I don't know. I, I think, I think you got to go with Boston again. I'm with you guys. Who's the, who's got the best player in this series? What do you think? IT. Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. 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 They got, yeah, they got two of the best ever. Yeah. Like, like, like they, like obviously, Jason Tatum and those guys are really good. Jalen Brown is really good, but Luca and Kyrie are something we haven't seen. So I'm, I'm going, I'm going with, and I'm putting them two right. Like they got the best duo. <laughs> like they, they don't just got the best players. I feel like they're the best duo. They just don't See, got the best team. Uh, Would you guys both? You guys are both putting Kyrie ahead of Jason Tatum. I'm not going. I'm and not going to go that far. I am. I am. Yeah. I am. I am. I am. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with that. I, I'm a big Kyrie fan. I'm a, big I'm a huge Kyrie, Kyrie fan. fan. Huge Kyrie. Yeah. No, no, I know you are. I, I, I'm going to just rock with that. I'm going I'm to I'm pick. They got the best. They got the best player and the best duo. I agree on the best Ooh, player. Oh, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Yeah, I agree on the best player part when it comes to Luka Doncic. But as far as a duo, I'm a. I respect any duo that's playing both sides of the ball. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. So I mean, when it comes to that, for me, I'm I'm a roll with you know Tatum and uh, John uh, Jalen Brown. But um, obviously, when it comes to scoring, mm-hmm. I, I could roll with Kai and right and Luca. But scoring not going to win you a championship like that, bro. Like <laughs> you gonna have to be on both sides to get this job done, bro. Like. <laughs> <sighs> Luca got outscore. He got he got to outscore. Hey, but, but Luca but can't you, outscore the Celtics down. though. <laughs> no, he can't. He can't. That's why. You know, yeah. That's why so we got the Celtics yeah. one. Yeah. It's just too much. It's too much. Definitely must see TV though. Yeah. That's why. That's why it's, I love yeah, them. It's gonna be they, electric. They must see TV. Yeah. This is gonna be. This is gonna be fun for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, normally we say the the team with the best player wins. I mean, that is historically mm-hmm. what happens in the NBA. I just think that while Dallas, to me, clearly has the best player, 
you know, if you look at the how deep you go in the rotation, maybe seven guys, you know, they, they've got five of the best seven. So yeah, just, they, that's, that's, that's the difference. <laughs> They're five is to overwhelm them. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. We'll see about that. Who has the coaching edge guys? Kid. Yeah. On, kid. Yeah. I like Jake. Yeah. Even though Missoula's really good, but mm-hmm. he has been put in that position. No knock on him. I, yeah. I, I just, I like kid with, with, with more experience. I think, Missoula is going to continue to become better as a coach. But, I mean, to his credit, he's early. He's still early in his career, bro. Like, he he still has his ups and downs to go through as a coach. So, uh, you know, I think Kid is more battle-tested. He's been through the ups and downs, um, you know, seeing different types of series throughout his coaching career and even has a championship under his belt with uh, the Lakers. So, uh I, I as think, a coach, yeah, I, and by yeah, the way, as obviously coach. as a player with Dallas, yeah. So I just I think that that type of experience puts him over the hump when it comes to out coaching Missoula. Uh, okay, so this is the big question: Who do you trust most at the end of games? Player wise, or team just team wise? wise, team. I'm gonna go first. I got I, I, if it's close, the last three or four minutes, I'm going with Dallas. I'm going with Dallas. If it's close, if it's close, <laughs> I'm going with Dallas. <laughs> you know, that's funny. It's crazy because, you know, we talked about it a little bit before the show, but in my mind, I, I just knew the Mavericks were considered more of a clutch team. Like, and you said earlier that the Mavericks are third and Boston is first when it comes to clutch. So that's kind of crazy to know, but even with me knowing that stat, I'm leaning with Dallas. Like I agree with IT. If if they allow these games to be close and you got a Kyrie and a Luka Doncic on the floor, it is scary. Like it is scary. So I'm not even a fan of you know the statistics like that, but yeah, I'm for sure going with Dallas. Clutch time, for sure. It is tough. All right. So what is the one specific thing that stands up about this matchup? I think you guys are going to say defense, but is there anything else beyond the defense that stands out to you guys? I, I'm a fan of the storylines, honestly, outside, like outside of between the lines, just the storylines that, that that are going into this series. Um, you know, it's, it's a former team for KP. It's a former team for Kyrie. Um it's, it's really funny how now, you know, this fan train for Kyrie is now moving full speed ahead again. And yep. just a year ago, you know, he was America's most hated. So uh, yep. I think this is an, an incredible redemption year for him. And, you know, regardless of the results, if he wins or loses, I think, you know, he won a lot of people back over. And it should Not and in Boston, my opinion. Though. Well, I mean, it's going to remain that way. I mean, <laughs> that's Boston's a tough fan base. But um, yeah. regardless of win or loss for Kyrie, I think he deserves this moment. Um, I'm glad he's back to this place of, you know, receiving more love and hate because he's that, mm-hmm. you know, incredible of a player. Um, agree, agree. He's agree. that much, He's that impactful for this league. Um, he's inspired a lot of basketball players coming up underneath him. And um, – you know, if, and if you're a basketball fan, it's hard to be. It's if you're a basketball fan in general, it's hard not to be a fan of Kyrie. Like he is yeah. the epitome of basketball. Like yep. so, um, you know, I'm I'm more so excited about the storylines as, as well. I think that's going to make mm-hmm. this series that much better. For sure. I mean, it you know that Boston crowd. Obviously, I, I think they're going to boo every time Kyrie touches the ball. You know, he got someone threw a water bottle at him one of the recent times he was there. Like, I mean, there's there's been some shady stuff. Uh, yeah, they, they ain't holding nothing back. They're not going to yeah. hold nothing back. I, that's why I, I hope Kyrie does his thing. I hope he yeah. does because, like, like, like Boog said, the storyline would be great. Like, if he if he does his thing in Boston after all the shit that they've been through together. Like that would be amazing. I'm I'm pulling for Kyrie. I'm a big Kyrie fan. I'm sure. I'm, I'm pulling for him for sure. But I don't know if it'll be enough. Look who's here. What Mister. up, y'all? 
Jamal Crawford, <laughs> dropping in. I Listen, love it. Taking over. I'm with three legends. Three real oh. legends. <laughs> three real legends. What's happening? Bug, I'm, Bug, I'm feeling crowded out by the uh, Washington State vibes here. I don't know. We'll see. Man, I was almost out there with them boys. I almost had my little, you know, my little stuff in Washington. I was considering the Huskies. I almost made it. I almost made the cut. Almost came out there. Almost came out there. No, wait. It, you're Tacoma. Is that right? Yeah, I'm Tacoma. For sure. And what about you, Jamal? I'm Seattle. Anywhere you're in Seattle. Seattle. Okay. I grew up all over the place in Seattle. Yeah. I've yeah. been in Tacoma too. I've been in the fish house and everything. I tease open the door to Tacoma as well. <laughs> <laughs> Vice versa. I'm a I'm a Seattle native as well. So right. Okay. Bro. All right. I'm so there's no beef both. there. I just wanted to I didn't know what oh, Washington no. State no, politics no, no, are. No, no, no. <laughs> Hell no. It's love. I've lived there. I've lived there as well. Jamal, we were just talking about sort of overall what stands out to you about this NBA finals matchup. What do you got? Wow. I Honestly, I, I wasn't sure Dallas was going to get here at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew Luka and, and Kai would, would do their thing, and I knew they would have a better flow because I thought last year was almost your turn, my turn. They would have a better flow in how they play. We all thought Boston would be here, but it's intriguing because Dallas took out three of the top four teams in the Western Conference. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think they're peaking at the right time, and it kind of reminds me of the, that, that Dirk-led team that won the championship. Yeah. Like how they're, they're just peaking at the right time and kind of went on the radar, and now they got that magic with them. So who would you pick here in this series? <laughs> See, there you go, Rachel, being great at what you uh-huh. do. I'm, I'm going to say my, my head says Boston, my heart says Dallas. So I'm just going to go with my heart on this one. I think Dallas is the more together team. I think I think Boston has some of that, like Mike Tyson, like early when he was fighting. He'll knock you out the first round. So I think Boston is that. If they're up 15, the ball is hopping, everybody's touching the rock, they're playing at their best. But when they get in tight games, I think that's when their trust sometimes comes into comes into the picture. Yeah, I mean, we were just talking about that, like, head and heart. I think, you know, I was saying that any Boston team doesn't really get a ton of pickup from fans around the country. I don't know what it right. is. It's, I think it's the same with New York teams. Like, you know, the, they're, they're not America's teams in that same way. Um, so I think around the rest of the country, outside of New England, there are a lot of people who would like to see this Dallas team win. And the storylines we were talking about when you first came on, I mean, they want Kyrie to sort of come full circle here. Luca is so engaging. And, and the idea that he could sort of finally get the title that we've been talking about since the day he got into the league, that kind of thing. And then you look at just the numbers and you look at, you know, how these teams have done. If you took both of the names off of it, the Celtics, the 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 individual players they've got, the team numbers that they've put together – it's sort of hard to argue with any of that. I, I don't, I don't know what would have to happen for the Mavericks to win. We haven't really talked about that guys. Like if the Mavericks were going to pull this off, what has to happen on the court? What do you got, Bug? <laughs> Man, it's going, it's, uh, for me, it's going to take a guy like PJ Washington having an, an incredible series. So I'm saying maybe averaging 20, 22 a game to match whatever production you're getting from a Kyrie and a Luka. Mm-hmm. On top of that, um, I think, I think lively, I think lively gets set. I think we see a lot of uh, Kleber, uh, Mac, Maxi Kleber, uh, mm-hmm. if I don't have his name messed up, but yeah, uh, you're Kleber, Maxi yeah. Kleber, um, Obviously, he's a a better perimeter defender when it comes to being a big. And um, Mm -hmm. I think that's more what they'll need when it comes to, you know, the five out type offense Boston runs. Um, They have Mm -hmm. five guys that can spread the floor um, consistently on the floor. So um, and it's going to take an incredible performance from Cleaver on the defensive end and also add some offense as well. So, um it's going to take – I think it's going to take a spectacular series from some of the role guys on the Mavericks mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. outside of, you know, Kyrie and Luka doing what they do on a nightly. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> IT, do you feel the same way or do you think there's other stuff that they could use to overcome Boston? I mean, the role players just got to play. Like, they got to yeah. give something. Like we said earlier, even if Luka and Kyrie – play exceptional they average 40 each like those other guys got to bring something and that's a big what if 
Like they've never been in this situation. The light's never been this bright in their career. They've never, I don't think, to a point to where they have to they have to give a lot. Like they gotta get every game, they gotta give their best. They gotta play their best, I think, for them to come out on top. Like Boston just has more players that play well in these moments than Dallas. That 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 we've seen from Dallas. Like we we don't know. We those guys might show up and play well each and every game. But that's just I think that's out of their character to be able to play that as well as they need to play every game in the NBA finals. Like that's hard to do. That's going to be hard. Not saying they can't. Like they got a chance. They got there for a reason. Dallas is a really good team, a well-coached team, but it's just like you got to play perfect every game for them for them to have a chance. But if the game is close, if these games are close, I got Dallas winning these games if they're close, for sure. It's a big right. hit. So, Jamal, what's the <laughs> argument for you picking Dallas? I think what has to happen? Point, Yeah, they have to keep the games close. If the games are closer, that's when Kyrie and Luka really shine. And by them being that aggressive, it relaxes everybody else. When your stars, those two know, when your superstar players are that good, everybody else can be who they are and start in their role. And I also think somehow, some way, Jay Kidd has to put himself in the game. And what I mean by that is his coaching knowledge, his experience, uh, you know, seeing the game from a different way. He has to somehow put himself in the game and put his fingerprints all over it where he kind of balances the talent they may not have by putting himself in and out coaching Missoula, if possible. Put himself in the game like spill a soda on the court? Are we talking yeah. about that Dang, kind of thing? That's awesome. yeah. It was genius. It was that genius. <laughs> Running into my I love it. Those are genius moves right there. That's what I'm talking about, right? You already know. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, look, you guys have been talking a little bit about the return of Porzingis and what that would mean. I think it's a great point, Bug, that people are kind of forgetting that Dallas is getting back someone, too. I know that Maxi played a little bit in spots toward the end of the Western Conference Finals, but that was clearly just to get him back in the rhythm of things. And I think we'll see him more in this series. So I guess whose impact do you guys think are, is greater of these returning players, KP, or Maxi and and how would it impact this series, Bug? KP for sure. I mean, we're talking about a, a consistent twenty a game. Um, also, yeah. rim protection. Also, somewhat versatility as far as you know playing out on the floor. Um, a mismatch problem for anybody because most bigs he can just turn around and shoot over the top of them. Um, any switches created where it's a guard on him, he's doing the same thing to them. Um, KP for sure, and it's not close. Um, I do like Kleber defensively more um, as a big on the perimeter, but, you know, outside mm -hmm. of that, his offense is very limited. And um, I, know, uh, I just feel like when it comes to KP, he's, the consistency is always there as far as production. I mean, I, the only thing I wonder about is, you know, he hasn't played in so long. IT, you've come back from injuries sort of – how much does that affect you that all of a sudden you're being thrown into an NBA Finals? I mean, that, I think that's going to play a big part. I think his job is just easier, though. Like, he's catch mm -hmm. and shoot. He's doing things that, like, he can kind of do in his sleep. Um, but, like, being thrown in the NBA Finals, like, I mean, I haven't been there. Bugs has been there. <laughs> that, 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 that's a different monster no matter who you are, especially coming back from injury. Mm -hmm. um, the lights are so bright that, you know, if you don't make a couple shots, that that is it's magnified. And you know, he has to make shots to have an impact. I think he has to make plays that have a, a immediate impact. So it's gonna be tough if he plays, but I think his teammates around him are good enough to make things so much easier for him to be able to catch and shoot, to be able to get wide open shots. Like it's not like he has to be the main guy. I think if you mm -hmm. have to be the main guy in this situation, coming back, that's ten times harder. He really has to space the floor, knock down open shots, um, attack closeouts. I think that's a lot easier than just being a Jackson Tatum or a Jalen Brown who has to do so much yeah. coming back from injury, if that makes sense. Yeah, and come, coming back from injury, especially like that rhythm, things you normally do, it normally works a certain way. If, when it doesn't work, especially with the stage being this big, how do you adjust? Do you get in your own way? Do you not find it? Like, those things all play a part. But, Rach, I was just looking at those two. I'm thinking, I'm like, we're talking about skill and, and balance of power. 
what if we put these two Sacramento Kings stars when they were together on Dallas right now? Does that balance? The, does that balance Ooh. power work? If they're on, if they're on Dallas right now, they're Sacramento versions since they were together. Does that balance yeah. the power play in Boston right now? Yeah, dude, 100%. You're always doing something like that. You're always. <laughs> He's right, though. Remix. You know Remix is coming. Like, like he, always, he always got some flavor to put on it. I feel you. <laughs> He's right. Please. This is why everyone says he's the breakout media star of, Not you know, sure. this year's playoffs. Although, you know, we, I Jamal, I just want to say we already knew. So I, I love all these Johnny come latelys to you. And I love the shine you're getting. It's a hundred percent deserved. But just remember who knew. Right. You knew. said something to me. You said something to me when I was still playing. You were like, you know mm-hmm. what? I'm coming to get yep. you. I'm telling you right now. When I wasn't yep. even thinking media, I was 100%. thinking I'd be the front office. I was nope. thinking I'd be in the front office to have dudes like this in the league that as we should have them. Superstars, great vets, these youngsters need these two in the league. They can get so much knowledge. It could be the foundation for their career. If I was if I was commissioner for a day, I would make it mandatory where you have to have 10 years experience, three guys on each team. I think that would make the league better. I think it would help set the tone. You have to have guys like this in the league. Have to. Have to, have to, have to. I mean, it's the rule changes about who, you know, what, what, how the balance of the roster works out that cut these vets out anyway. I think it was the 2016 CBA, yes. if I'm remembering right, but yeah. it totally changed the the makeup of the rosters, and I think it sucks. Like, I, I, I think that's just such valuable experience, and it would change how these guys play. It absolutely um, would. I mean, think about that. I, I was saying that about it. Like, what guard in the league that's younger would not want to learn from him? What yeah. big would not want to learn from Buggy? Cut? Are you kidding me? Like all Amen. the now, they've seen it all. They've conquered the top <laughs> of the world with their own game, and then they're willing to give all this back to you. Like that's a no brainer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buggy, I think you have seen it all, all of it. I, I, th- yeah. I don't think there's from anything you've seen. I've seen it all, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Marl, I just wish everybody was as smart as you in the NBA, man. It'd be yeah, a that's why I got to talk about it now. I got to be on the on Look, talk about that's it. Why he's take, that's, that's why Maul's taking it over. Yeah, that's I got to right. talk about it. He, 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 that's, that's why he's taking it over. He's saying what, he's saying what we want to say, but he's saying it the right way. I agree with that. I agree with that. As I, as I said, we knew first, Jamal, when you were still playing, I was like, you are 100% going to be a media superstar. And I you love the shine that. that you're getting from everyone else. Seriously, I, I love that people are recognizing how good you are. And did you like calling games? Was that something you liked more than the studio stuff? Honestly, I don't know. Like, I, I love both of them. And I think for me mm-hmm. and Rachel, you honestly, you said that you literally said that now is at this point, probably eight years ago. But for me, I just want to be like, I'm not on no hot take stuff. I'm not on like, I, I want to be true to the game. So I got to, I got to yeah. speak the truth. You know what I mean? I think that's important because there's a whole generation that's underneath us. That's looking like there was a kid that came to me yesterday in the gym. He's 17 years old. And he was like, man, you calling the games makes it exciting. I'm like, that's yeah. crazy to even know that now the younger generation is watching because they feel like they're represented. Mm-hmm. They feel like our culture is represented. They feel like it's really stuff that we would say and do. And I love that part. And I love calling the games. I want to be like now, honestly, now that I'm in this space, I want to be as good as I, I possibly can in every way, shape, and form. So I'm studying. I'm, I'm always going to be me, but I want to be better at it. I want to learn more. I want to continue to to figure that out. But the playoffs was a, a, a blast because I'm up there with two legends as well, with Kevin and Reggie. You know what I mean? So yep. to be on that stage and still be able to talk about sea walking and still talk about the proposal and all those things, <laughs> Like that's, it that's was so fun. much fun. I got Reggie up there using Nas references now. Like it's just dope to be able to, to be in that space. Uh, it's amazing. I, I look. I got to give you your flowers, Mark, because you know how our relationship is. But, right. Like to see you doing your thing with the with the commentating and the analyst stuff. Like, like to talk the game how you do is just amazing. You, you bringing back the good energy that we need. Obviously, Rachel's been doing it forever, and she's, she's been at the yeah. top of the game. So we 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 got to give both of y'all y'all flowers Absolutely. because Aww. y'all bring y'all bring a different type of energy to the culture. Like everybody can relate to how you guys talk about the game, and that shit just that's just amazing. So I gotta I gotta give you guys Jamal and Rachel, you guys as flowers because that we appreciate y'all. That. Y'all put a smile on the face when when, when when we listen to basketball and you guys are talking about it. Like, and that's just 
That's not just dope. saying that because you guys are right here, but I mean, like, well, I'm saying that when you guys aren't, when you guys aren't like, yeah. I like listening to Rachel. I like Aww. listening to Jamal when it comes to, 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 to talking basketball. For sure. Uh, for real. And we love listening to y'all for sure. That's right. Thank you. That is right. And look, Jamal, I love, that's one of the things I love about TNT. It's not built on hot takes, right? It's they, they want to get their pop and charisma from the guy's energy and sort of, as opposed to let's argue something, you know, you got to take this side, yeah, you got to take yeah. that side. So I think right. it's a perfect, I think it's a perfect place for you. And I'm just so psyched you're there and the all cast was great. And I'm sure you're going to do some version of that again for the finals or, or something, but it's, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy to get more and more Jamal Crawford on my television. Yeah, you, uh, you, I you do were Crawford Dominus before, Rach. You, you, you literally saw it when I wasn't even thinking media, so I appreciate that. And you're a legend, so like Isaiah and Book said, so I appreciate that. For real, for real. Uh, yeah. I know talent, man. I got two you of them do. right here. So. <laughs> you got the eye test. You got yeah, the eye right. test. You done put that's a lot right. of us in the game, right? For sure. Right, for real. Right. For real. That's, mm-hmm. That should be a story in itself. How many people it should you put in the game? Oh, I'm producing I, that. I I'm producing that list. series. Yeah. Yep. We, we, we're doing a series, doc, or a movie. Which one? Yep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a pretty good list of guys I put on TV first who've gone on to big things. So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, that, sure. that feels good to me, actually. I, I yeah, like that I part. Too. So thanks for recognizing. <laughs> I want to get you guys in a uh, DraftKings frame of mind because we got to advise the betters here. On There's a ton of prop bets floating around on the NBA Finals. Some of them are really fun. So... We have a segment, Jamal, here that's called I'll Take That Bet. And uh, you kind of got to pick some of the bets you think you would take or stay away from. Boogie has a pretty good track record so far. So we'll see how things go from here. All All right. right. (laughs) Tatum's rebounding. The prop bet is at plus 100. Will Tatum average 10 or more rebounds in this series? Boogie, start us off. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what do you guys think? I I'm I got yes too. He, he rebounds do? and they shoot a lot of threes. So I got I I'm, got him. I'm gonna go no. Actually, I'm gonna go right under team. I'm going like nine point five because he's gonna have so <laughs> much energy doing everything else, and he's doing whatever it takes to win. You gotta give Tatum his props, but I'll just say I'm gonna. They both say yes. I'm gonna just say no because I feel like he's right underneath team. I think he's like nine point eight, nine point five. Well, look, it wouldn't be a plus bet if Vegas didn't agree with you, right? So right, right, right. they think they, <laughs> they they think that too. Um, I do these like parlay picks for DraftKings uh, in the middle of the week every week, and there was something where I picked Tatum rebounds, and I, the whole game it made me so nervous because I was just like, he's not going to get there, he's not going to get there, he's not going to get there, and I think he, he got there by the skin of his teeth. But it is, it, that's, I mean, look, they know what the odds are. They set the odds for a reason. Ten is right around the, eh, I don't know, Mark. So we'll see. All right, all right. I want to ask you guys: Will Kyrie average twenty five or more in this series? There's another plus bet, one thirty plus one thirty. I'm gonna say no, and the reason is he averaged 15 Ooh. against OKC. He averaged 15 against OKC. So, well, yep. And when we look at Boston def- defenders or the main guys we feel that'll be on them, and Derek White and Drew Holiday, I said earlier in the show, if I'm going to war with Drew Holiday as a defender, I like my chances. Do I think Kyrie will be shut down completely? No, but he's gonna have a mm-hmm. very, very, very difficult series. What do you guys think? I'm gonna go with yes. Mm. I'm gonna go with yes. <laughs> he going back to Boston. He got good energy. He he's. I'm going with yes. Kyrie's gonna average twenty five. Mm. He, he's definitely gonna average twenty five. He oh, saves really? you with Osagian. He's playing Sade on the way to the gym. <laughs> he's averaging twenty five in that play. There's no way around. That's what I'm saying. There's no way. He got to average twenty five for them to win, so I, and I think he knows that. And I'm going to take it a step further, Rach. I think if Dallas wins this series, I think this championship can mean more to Kyrie than the one he got in Cleveland. A hundred percent. I think so, too. For sure. sure. I think so, too. I think it's a great observation, though. I hadn't heard anyone talking about that, and I think you're absolutely right, right? Just after everything he's done and seen and been through and everything. And been through. This is like the redemption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
And, and you're right, Isaiah. Like I've spent a lot of time with Kyrie through these playoffs and really through this year. We had a big sit down interview um, earlier in the season, and his his mindset is just so much more zen. And I, I don't think any of the stuff the Boston fans throw at him, hopefully no, not no. literally, like the water bottle, but in general, thanks, um, thanks. are going to affect him. Look. I do. I do wonder if them booing Kyrie is going to fire up Luca. Because we saw Luca in that game five, right? I mean, he he likes he's got Reggie in him. He likes the crowd with that stuff. He got that Euro no, league. Kyrie's out of peace of mind right now. He, mm-hmm. He's nothing's really affecting him, like, and that that when you're at that stage, like anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah, him. everything is aligned with him. Like his mind, body, <laughs> yes. spirit, his health. Yeah. He, he seems nope. like he's in the best shape I've seen him in. He's picking up yeah. full court. He's sprinting. Yep. And I'm going to take it a step further as well, Kai. I think right now what Kyrie's done, I think he's combined his game with some Steph Curry's game. Like the way he's running around on screens, moving without the ball, like he's combined mm-hmm. the two right now. Like he's in, he's in a, mm-hmm. a sweet spot right now. Like he's in a he's on a magic carpet ride right now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, his health is – that's a huge factor. I mean, he's missed a ton of games the last six or seven years, including yes. big chunks of playoff games and the fact that he's got his body in shape and, and obviously some of it's luck, but I also think it's a lot of how you prepare and, and treat your body throughout the season, and he's been on point. With all of that, I do want to ask you, Jamal, just because you were doing that game live, that game five at the Western Conference Finals, when you saw Luca chirping at the crowd the way he was, what, what came to mind for you? Luca's a gangster. And I mean that in the most <laughs> respectful. <laughs> I mean that in the most respectful. <laughs> what Luca seen where he came from Slovenia, but Luca is really <laughs> like that. Like he, <laughs> for sure. And and these guys will tell you because like I said, they were they were this. We know in the league there's some there's some real like dogs and there's some dogs that are dogs when it's like, okay, they they kind of puppies a little bit. They ain't really dogs like that. Luca's a yeah. real dog. Like he's going to get us. The bigger yeah. the moment, the the bigger the play, the better Luca is. And even some greats don't do that. So he's he's different, race. Like he's really, really and he's playing like he got headphones on. You can't speed him up. <laughs> he's, he's just out here doing his thing. Like, no, his own pace. His own, and that's the thing about it. It's his pace, but his pace can make you go his pace. And then, and then he's just dissecting you. Like, he's something different. Man, all right. So I want to give you finals MVP odds because Luca's right up there. Jason Tatum is the favorite. Minus 115. you got to put a lot of money down to make any money on Jason Tatum. Uh, Luca, though, is plus 205. Uh, Jalen Brown plus six fifty, Kyrie plus two thousand two hundred. So if you had to, if if we gave you guys each a hundred dollars, wh- where are you putting your money on Finals MVP? I'm gonna go with Luca, okay. just because I think Dallas is gonna win, and I think he's gonna like yeah. Kyrie may Kyrie may even average more points. Like say Kyrie averages, you know, whatever he averages, Luca could be close to that, but I think Luca will have the assists and the rebounds as well. So I think Luca is the MVP if they if Dallas wins it. What do you guys think? Go over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went first to buy y'all time. I saw what was going on. Right. No, I know where I'm going. Look, I know where I'm going. Look, I, I know who he's going right. with. I'm going with go. Jalen Brown. I'm going with Jalen okay. Brown, man. I, I think I think this is also something that's kind of floated under the radar is like he's proven, you know, mm-hmm. he deserves that. He took a lot of heat for the contract. Don't really know why. I mean, he's really one of those he's guys in the league, but worth it. you know, he's taking a lot of criticism as being, you know, the so-called Robin or back up to Tatum. And in actuality, they're one, a one B in my opinion. So, um, and I'm not really the guy that's trying to push the, you know, who's the, the star of the team narrative, but um, I think Jalen Brown is a star in his own right, and he's just not really getting the credit for it. So uh, I think this series, he, he shows he's really, really that. And um, I think he surprises us and gets, you know, MVP. I was thrilled he won the Eastern Conference Finals MVP. I, I just thought that was like great recognition for all that he does. And he's improved this year. I, I got to give him so much credit because some guys get that contract, right? And they kind of yes. lean off playing a little bit. They don't work quite as hard. And he it seems like he's worked even harder. Like maybe he's trying to prove he's worth it. I don't know. Or maybe that's just the way he's made. Like 
he is he is super impressed me. And I thought it's funny; it was really close. I think it was like six to five in the Eastern Conference uh, Finals MVP voting. MVP, yeah. And mm-hmm. and I to me, I think it should have been more lopsided in Jalen's favor because between that shot he hit and then just sort of how he played the rest of the series, I was big on it. All right, it it's your turn. You got to you got to come up with it. Who you got? Who's your MVP? Who you putting your money on? <laughs> Since I got the Celtics winning. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Derek White. <laughs> Derek. That is, he's not even on the board. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I, I'm a, I, I, I got Jalen Brown. You gotta got to go to a bookie winning. for Derek White. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think know something Jaylen we Brown. don't, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to nah, say. Nah. Look, I got the script. I got the script. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the NFL nah, this season, Brown. right? I got, I got the Celtics winning. I'm gonna go with Jalen Brown. All right. For sure. All right. We'll see. We'll see. I like Jamal that you're standing on business with the Dallas pick, though. Cause... Yeah, I got. I got to do what I got to do, Rach. Yeah. I got to do what I got. Rach, can I ask them one question? Because it's, it's yeah, just, go go, it's, please. It's, it's in my mind. I T. When you see Jalen Brunson, do you see some of yourself? And Boog, when you Ooh. see Joker, do you see some of yourself? Um, with because I, I get that a lot with the Brunson. Like I get, mm-hmm. I do see a. Uh, uh, a little bit of myself in there in in his game. He's uh-huh. left-handed. He got real hoop game. Like you could tell, he really works on his game. And the biggest thing I I we, I got that compares us. I think his belief in himself. Yes. Like his belief. Yeah. He believes he's one of the best. He yeah. believes he's the best guard in the NBA when he steps on the floor. So I think I see a lot of similarities in our game, but we go about it. A little bit differently, different. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But like his belief and his confidence, I say that's the biggest similarity I see in between our games. Is like he believes he's he's that dude for sure. Like nothing that he's done has surprised himself. And I not, think not, not one thing. That 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 yeah. that that's like how I carry myself for sure. And book, I saw you sit back. You didn't only you didn't only answer. You sat back like whoa. Look, look. What? Like, I know, I know. What? <laughs> oh, I wasn't you, expecting you, that. You, 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 you came you, out of the field with this one, bro. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, yeah. I do. I came I see, out of left field, huh? Yeah, you came out of left field with that one. <laughs> but to answer your question, I do. Um, it's, it's definitely a lot of similarities. Um, the biggest one for me is, you know, playing without the athleticism. You know, that's, you know, since I've been a young and that was always the running, you know, joke with me when it came to me being around my peers and, and things like that was, you know, Boog, you ain't got no hops, which was cool. Like, I figured that shit out. <laughs> and, you know, uh, for me, when it became, you know, trying to be the, best version of myself. I feel like a lot of things, one thing that young hoopers overlook when it comes to, you know, just becoming the best version of yourself as a hooper is you got to embrace what your weaknesses are and you got to be okay with those. And Mm -hmm. the reason I say that is, is because if you don't embrace those weaknesses, you'll never be able to find other strengths. Um, Obviously you have your strengths as a hooper, you know what you're really good at, but I knew I wasn't athletic and I knew at a certain point it was going to catch up to me. It was going to, it was going to be a moment where, you know, I was going to have to rely on something else. And if I didn't work on those things early, I think I wouldn't have never been able to get past those tests. So um, I think that's something that, you know, Jokic has mastered at an early, early age. Um, I, I think he's a way better passer. Dude's passing skills are like fucking. I, he might be better than most point guards that's played this game. Oh, he comes is. To yeah, he no, is. I mean, sure. I think I it's think unquestioned. He's the best passing, passing big man we've ever seen. All right? time, a hundred percent. Um, I think that I think he's in a category of his own when it comes to that. Um, but you know, it's a lot of similarities. I think. I think he's a better shooter um, at this point in his career than I was. It wasn't, and I and I say it was more so the timing of the air. Um, yeah. yeah, threes weren't big, like that. For bigs, yeah, bigs weren't really being embraced to shoot the ball as much. You know, it was a few guys like Dirk and you know guys like that to you know be embraced on that part. But for the most part, they wanted you under that basket. So um, mm-hmm. I think that part of his game really um, you know outshine mine, but. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is the, uh, you know, the lack of athleticism and then being able to just, you know, back that Dominate. up. Dominate. 
having and IQ in the game. Down there. Right. And being able to dominate. You dominated, absolutely. bro. Come on, man. You, do- <laughs> you didn't play. You dominated. Bro. Look, look Ma, Ma, we said it a couple shows ago. I said it. Like, these bigs now, Joker and B, like, they had to watch Boogie. Yes. They had to watch Boogie coming up. Like, they had, like, their games are so similar in terms of being able to do everything as a big. Mm-hmm. Like, hey. they definitely watched tape of Boogie. Like, he's, <laughs> I'm not going to say he started it, but they was looking at home wherever they was. Like, damn, I got to be like that. You had to respect like, it. Like, I got to. You had to. Hey, Zeke, you I made to. a joke. You laid the I foundation. That, and, and the reason I asked that is because I see similarities to both players I just asked y'all about. But I made a joke. I said, man, y'all sleeping boogie is, is Jokic's <laughs> alter ego. That's the that's his alter ego. <laughs> like, for real. For real. <laughs> y'all better take a deep, deep dive on that one, I'm telling you. <laughs> Come out of the phone booth. <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. Oh, um, I love when you say that about the athleticism because I don't know if you guys watch hockey at all, but they're always like, oh, he can't skate. And I'm always like, well, he can because he plays in the <laughs> NHL, but I get right. it. He's not a natural skater. Boogie, you are athletic. You played in the NBA for many, many years. So <laughs> I get the difference. I get the distinction you're talking about, but, you yeah. know, let's, let's, let's be real. Um, you know, what you're talking about, about making that adjustment. You know, when I was starting out in TV, uh, I was kind of trying to be what I saw on TV. There just weren't a lot of women who looked like me on television. They were all blonde. They were all tall. They were sort of spokes modely. And they didn't, you know, I'm much more of a, okay, let's talk about it person as opposed to, I am presenting you with gloss and glamour. Um, right. And I was trying to be the, the other kind because I didn't know any better. And that's what I saw. And Stuart Scott pulled me aside, actually. And he just said, look, he's like, I tried it too. I tried being like the anchor person that they wanted. And I was only 70% because that's not me. And he said, then I just became myself and I could be 100%. And, you know, I, they're doing a 30 for 30 documentary on him. I hope, I hope they're honest with themselves that a lot of people at ESPN and the higher ups did not like him being 100% himself until the public, it just got so overwhelming. They had to go with it. But I love what you said, Bog, about you and Jokic. Just you got to be you. Everyone else is taken. So I, I don't know. I just I, I think that I think that shit's really important. All right, we got to give Boogie his love because Jamal. I assume you saw four and zero sweep in the finals over in Taiwan. Of MVP. Of course. Amazing. Amazing. So I want to <laughs> take a look. Our latest and last edition of the Boogie Chronicles from Taiwan. Everyone take a look at how this man prevailed. We just want to make five. First one to make five, starting now. All right, bet. Uh, that's what I need. Five. Ah! You know, hopefully uh, a positive influence, but uh, there might be a slight chance they picked up a thing or two. He ran out with the music. I didn't write that. I would love to figure out who did. Shut the bitch ass. <laughs> I mean, bro, bro, bro. I, th- I think I so. mean, we win it. So. Right. <laughs> like you on your Isaac Hayes. Like. Yeah, nigga, I'm out here looking like George Gervin, nigga. I got Clippers, man. Fuck it, man. Fuck it. I don't care, man. I don't care what nobody think, man. I'm against the standard, man. I am the standard. Nah, when I get home, I'm getting cut, bro, because then the standard changes. <laughs> Got to win four. All right, so stay locked in. This is going to be way harder. It's on their court, their fans, okay? Got to be ready for everything. But if we're mentally ready, we're the better team we're going to win. Let's be locked in from the beginning. Okay, Jill, try to off, try to off. Let's not come in halftime having to have some inspirational speech. We know what we got to do. We know how we got to play tonight to beat this team. Let's stay together. Play together, we're going to win this game. But the biggest thing for tonight is being poised, because this crowd is going to be fucking crazy. They're going to come out with a lot of energy. Cousins at the top, steps back for three and puts it down. Oh, Cousins, Chima, Sejin, Chaba, Devin. Shouting overrated to Demarcus Cousins. 
strong words for somebody sitting behind the scorer's table and an LED screen. Playing with a lead in the second half of a game can be fool's gold. You don't want to become relaxed, you don't want to become stagnant, like, and start playing, like, too relaxed, because that's how teams creep back in. We got to come out with the mindset that the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. Pee-wee, each out, rainbow shot. <laughs> Let's be dominant from start to finish. Don't get these dudes no life in We worked too hard to get to this point. Let's we'll slap up now. Let's hit these bitches in the mouth early and let's go home with a championship. Let's go. Real three, one to three! Win. game is like they're gonna give us a good first half we gonna whoop their ass second half let's stay locked in one more half Maul, do you want to start off with giving Boogie some flowers here? Yeah, Boogie Cousins is one of the greats of his era, of his generation. Obviously, still watching his evolution, watching Boogie become the one that was like, you know what, fellas, we need to do this, this, and that, become that leader mm -hmm. that everybody wanted to see. He was doing it, but to see it publicly and to see what he's doing, his talent, like I just said, he was joking, just alter ego because he was – and is that talented. Like, he can literally do anything on the court. We would play against him at times, and he would just dominate, and he'd be laughing. Then he'd have a scowl. Then he'd start hitting threes and look at our coach. Like, he could literally do everything on the court. And he did it in a style all his own, so it's the utmost respect. I love seeing him still winning championships, still out here killing, and still mm -hmm. doing his thing enough where the youngsters coming up and go do their deep dive mm -hmm. on Boogie Cousins because he's a real one. Appreciate you, brother. No doubt. And people don't know this. I've never said this. I got a lot of never said, but I've never said this before. I was about to leave the Clippers in 2016. I just came off a six man of the year award. And it was 
July, I think, 2nd. Like and a buggy Boog already he knows like, what you're yo. about to say. <laughs> Book text me like, yo, you about, you want to come to SAC? I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, bro. This was like late at night. I'm like, yeah, bro, <laughs> how come? I'm like, I just need that extra year. And he worked on getting the extra year. It didn't happen. But I, I, I was honored that somebody his caliber reached out to me to come to his team. That's a fact. Bro, they never listened to me, bro. <laughs> 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 they never listened. That's a fact. Like, at least you tried. Detroit, bro. they Detroit. never listened to me, bro. I you keep thinking about you guys tried. with Michael. It was Malone. my fault, and I had no, I had no, I had no skin in it, bro. It was just my fault. Like, <laughs> but I appreciate the text, bro. I really did. Absolutely, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I keep thinking of you guys. If if you had gotten your way, Boogie and Michael Malone would have stayed in Sacramento. We've obviously seen obviously this fucking guy gone. wouldn't have went anywhere, man. Like I, they yeah, didn't listen yeah. to me about anything, <laughs> like nothing. <Man. laughs> I don't think it's just Boog who hasn't gotten his proper recognition because that's completely true. It's true of Isaiah, but it's true of you, Jamal. I texted you a while ago. I think it was even before the Hall of Fame nominations came out. Yeah. Like you are a Hall of Famer, my friend. And yeah, I know you didn't make it you know, all the way this year through the finalist, you know, sort of progression, but I think you will. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. If you look at your numbers, if you look at those six man awards, I just, I mean, Manu's in the Hall of Fame. I, I just feel like, to me, it's an unquestioned thing. And I don't know, Bug, if you feel the same way, but. Absolutely, man. And I, it, it's not even just about the encore. It's, it's, it's the big brother like you are to everybody underneath you, bro. Like, as far as, you know, the league that. recognize it, you know, that's whatever. We don't always get the recognition we deserve when it comes to, you know, the league. But from your peers, bro, like. You a Hall of Famer regardless. Like, it is what it is. We know what you are to this game. We know what you continue to be to this game. Um, I mean, you've raised up so many youngers up underneath you. And not only did you take them under your wing, but they are all successful. Like, that's the crazy part about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's amazing to see, bro, continue to shine your, your light, you know, over all the people underneath you, bro. And, you know, just keep being you, bro, because it's a beautiful thing. You, got, you just being yourself – is a blessing within itself, and it's crazy to see. So just continue to be you, bro. It's amazing. I appreciate that. And, Rach, I know you are Hall of Fame, going to be Hall of Fame, beyond Hall of Fame, and everything. And Boogie absolutely should be in the Hall of Fame as well. But And, I, and I'm honored because you're as good as your peers think you are more than anything. And so for me, if I ain't making it basketball, I'm damn sure trying to get in this media space, Rach. I'm going That's right. That's right. You'll I'm go going to let the me other. one door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go around the back and find the other door. I think you'll get in as a player. I just want the invite when they get you the orange jacket. Oh, I just want to be invited to the ceremony. I'm just saying, um, I, I don't think there's any questions. So I'm, I'm waiting for next year. We'll see how, you know, a lot of times it's who else is being nominated in, in the particular sure. class and they have ideas about what they want the class to look like. Um, but I don't, I don't think there's any question. So we'll, we'll watch out for that. I want all of you guys out there to watch out for, we are doing a live version of the truth lounge Sunday, June 9th. That's this coming Sunday pregame before game two at big night live in Boston. Paul is going to be, I mean, you know, Paul is going to be on one, right? Because <laughs> he's going to be on two, right? He's going to be on right? two. He's going to be on <laughs> but the Celtics back so so everything that you expect from Paul Pierce turn that up to 11 uh, I'll be there we're going to have some special guests it's going to be a lot of fun so you can come live if you're in Boston or you can watch it live on YouTube so I'm very excited about that and then you can catch all the episodes of Bully Ball on the DraftKings Network you can catch us on the All the Smoke Productions YouTube channel you can listen to us wherever you get your podcast we will catch you next week thank y'all Thank you. Thanks for having me, y'all.